Hello guys and welcome back to HJW Gaming and a continuation of my season updates. This time bringing you the video I promised in my last, our ring battle between Gondor and Mordor. So this is between my faction Gondor, which is the Fellowships of Home and also Dawn, up against Mordor, which is Turd, Logo and Vicky. So this promises to be an interesting battle as both of these two factions have shown to be very strong within this server um, with ourselves taking on uh, Lothlorien, Isengard at different times and Mordor primarily taking on Erebor and winning their fights as well. So both sides should be um, pretty well seasoned or have had opportunities this season to level up and get ready. So we should be uh, in for an interesting fight. Both sides have full barracks as far as I'm aware as we gave plenty of time to prepare so there should be a lot of fights going on and a lot of troops <laughs> being sent to their deaths now the premise of this ring battle is reasonably simple uh, you'll have seen in my previous updates that we have mainly been around the kind of undeeps region at least around Amon Lank so that's where we are going to start as Gondor and you'll see we have three fronts so we have this central area here through this little choke point. Down further to the south is another entrance across, or another route across Dol Guldur, and you'll see that Mordor have built up on the other side. And then finally, the kind of third entrance is up towards Dol Guldur itself. Now we've restricted so that no one's allowed to go over the opposite side of Dol Guldur. It's only these three entrances here. Uh, so yeah, we're coming from this side with Mordor primarily being relocated in the upper Anduin Vale area and therefore also building on the opposite side so that when the time ticks round to 18 UTC, both sides will smash into each other and obviously try and get the upper hand. So yeah, there's, uh, there's going to be a lot of good fights here. Lots of armies slowly starting to trickle in. Of course, there's another hour at this point for them to come. But you can see there's plenty built up, ready to go. So the other premise of this ring fight is going to be to try and obviously remove the opposition from this side of uh, Amon Lank and claim Amon Lank, but it doesn't stop there. You also have to push up towards the tunnel. Uh, so in our case, uh, Mordor need to push towards the Undeeps tunnel and move towards trying to capture the Undeeps, and we need to push through uh, the, the northern tunnel and push towards upper Anduin Vale. So... Uh, yeah, we'll see who comes out on top of that. I do have footage of the majority of the ring battle. Unfortunately, I did have to take a flight uh, to a vacation about you know midway through, so I've tried to capture as much as I possibly can. So you'll see here, I've skipped slightly ahead, and I will put it on slightly faster speed, but you'll see that it's just about to tick to 20 UTC, and this is where the two sides are going to start fighting, so we kick it off here with a couple of fights here up against LEGO. So me and LEGO were talking at the time in world chat, and I said, we're going to hit into each other and see what happens, and... Uh, yeah, you'll see we got a nice victory there. Two armies taken down by our, our primary army, King of Men. And you'll see everyone else is now starting to move in the south area. Now, I'll put this on slightly higher speed, of course, as with the, with the uh, tile-taking timers, things no longer move as quickly as they did in previous uh, ring fights in 1.0, which is a real shame, as the constant flipping back and forth of tiles really was great a great way of showing how momentum was swinging in a battle rather than just seeing all of these draw and tile timers come coming out which isn't quite as interesting but either way we should be able to get a general flavor of what's going on you'll see there's a lot of movement from us in the south area which is where dawn primarily placed most of its force so the plan was for dawn to kind of take where most of their armies meanwhile home would push through this small checkpoint because this is the closest area to the tunnel to the north we had both placed some armies, but a lower number on this kind of northern area. Um, reason being is, of course, we didn't want the opponents to get round and flank us, so we needed to have an amount of force there, but just enough to hold them while the majority of our force was in this midsection. That way we could then spear kind of through directly towards the, uh, the objective and... Um, yeah, try and get as far through as possible. You'll see here I'm just quickly showing the army that I'm using. Um, not the massively highest respect levels, but reasonable enough gear. Respect 5 King of Men, you know, holding more than his own a lot of the time. But uh, yeah, only R3 Sauron currently. 
having a flick through as we go across the uh, as we go across Amon Lang, just seeing some of the uh, some of the reports, and it looks like on the majority this is coming out in our favour currently. Um, it looks like we've slightly higher leveled fighting against Lothlorien, of course, and CMPS than some of the uh, some of the Turden logo guys have fighting um, fighting against Erebor. We've seen a lot of level forty armies, which was surprising, as we thought they'd have a lot more, um, you know, close to level fifty armies, as they had been fighting in this server for the you know the same amount of time that we had. You'll see Aragorn, King of Men here, pulling out 125k. You'll see this a couple of times during this ring battle. Is that actually? I think I've put, said this before in my King of Men guide, which if you haven't seen, feel free to go and take the look. Or also my uh, best value for money comms is on there as well. He actually has only a respect respect five commander. He's putting up huge amounts of damage. You know, pretty comparable to Dane. In that case, he was only 10 to 13k lower. And that's with him being respect 5 and Dane being respect 11. So, um, yeah, he's def definitely a good addition to my team and a nice, good value one. But if we carry on looking through the reports some of our teams getting here, you can see there's it's primarily victories we're seeing here. You see Cole Bulba here. He's just brought Dane into his team. Uh, he has an excellent AMR, which is kind of the main damage of his team. And he's just cutting through three or four armies at a time here. <laughs> Which is pretty crazy. Again, Sam Peter Durin as well, very strong player. Um, sorry, these are a little bit quick due to the speed up, but uh, you get the general gist that a lot of these are victories currently. So we are moving forward, as you can see, um, kind of progressing down this central area primarily. And the, the southern area actually is a little bit of a stalemate at the minute. We've taken kind of the first row of tiles and then they're kind of holding back any progression. Uh, from there uh, and the northern area is you know slight movement across where there were some neutral tiles but not a huge amount of fighting up there the primary fight of course being on this uh, this choke point here looks like their intention was similar to ours good hit there as well we got you know most of these the benefit of these is most of them are zeroing going from full army to zero which means that we don't have to waste time with the draw timer You see here as well, we've just hit again. So I am trying to skip out the times where I'm reinforcing, as of course that's not particularly entertaining. But we did hit here again, and we hit uh, this white wizard. And uh, of course we do have a gear advantage here, but he is one of the few that seems leveled up with 44 level armies. Uh, this one level 40, but we did take, uh, you know, three, maybe three and a half armies down with us, which was really useful. Here, of course, we did uh, take a failure, but actually if you look at the net troop loss, we did... Um, uh, we did kind of take more of his troops on our way out as well, which is good considering, of course, our uh, commanders had taken HP loss as well. Uh, hence why Aragorn, King of Men's damage, was down in 48k. I assume he died halfway through those rounds and didn't make it all the way to uh, to round 10. But we continue to progress along this uh, along this little corridor, kind of smashing into all the forts. Of course, the problem here is that because we're having to use our main fighting armies, we are then smashing into forts and almost sieging forts using uh, secondary armies. Uh, oh, sorry, using our primary armies, not secondary siege armies, which is we are at risk of using up too much stamina and then... Um, you know, and then not being able to then take the tunnel and continue our progression, or leaving ourselves open to a counter-attack. So the southern area here, you'll see we've started getting on top. You know, there's a big row of tiles there that we are close to taking the next row of tiles. And when I say we, this is primarily uh, uh, Dawn. So they have kind of got the upper hand here and have started progressing towards forts again. And obviously the more forts we take out, the less opponents will be able to get into the region. So, um, so of course, we will see less and less resistance, so we should then accelerate as we start taking out more and more of these forts. But you can see it's, there's a long way to go yet. Yeah, the, the, the volume of forts um, volume of forts in our way is quite impressive. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we're getting some good um, good movement going on in this southern area. Which primarily we weren't kind of designed to progress on this front, but if we can take out as many of their armies as possible, that's always an advantage. Skip forward a little bit here. This is about five minutes later. We're looking at the northern area now. 
just doing a little time lapse of uh, of movements up there. You can see we've primarily uh, progressed across the neutral tiles and are now taking forts up this area. There's not a huge number of armies though, to be honest. You'll see there's only five or six enemy armies up here. So this is primarily just going to be smashing forts, as I think this might have been either their secondary, um, you know, plan of forts, or uh, they they figured this was the furthest point away from their tunnel, so it kind of didn't really need defending because they could just use the forts as a stall whilst they fought elsewhere. Their primary resistance actually was in the same area where we were, um, trying to go through that choke point, as I figure they thought the same as us, that it is the shortest point across the tunnels, so they would focus primarily there. Now looking at a few more of our battle reports, we've had a couple of good ones. So this one here... You know, we didn't get to the zero, unfortunately, but we did, uh, you know, take down to low. And that's a good army there as well, using Falgin and um, Falgin and Guardians. Here we did take a loss, but we took out more of the opponent's troops than our own. Slightly low respect levels, so uh, not surprising that we came out on top of that one. And then our second army also has hit this Frodo and Sam army, which is a little frustrating as we've taken out all the other comms and troops. But Frodo being Frodo has refused to die. He is the, uh, you know, the draw stall king. So we've just left with the draw on this tile. And you can see that we, are, we have now progressed almost out of this little choke point area and started moving forwards. And also the northern area has started to fan out and eventually will join up with that choke point at, at some time. Take a little bit of time yet, but you can see some of these tiles kind of um, between the northern area and moving across east towards that mid choke point don't have forts on them actually, so they, they'll be able to move a lot quicker across and kind of link up to this area. Meanwhile in the south we have progressed forward again, so it looks like we are getting the upper hand in this war. However, one of the things we actually expressed at this time whilst we were going through is we were quite surprised that a lot of their higher level armies weren't on the front line here. So we were smashing into a lot of level 40, level 41 armies, um, but not as many kind of 47 to 50s as we were expecting. Uh, I did hear feedback from the rest of my team later on, as of course this does, this is a, um, almost 9 o'clock UTC, and as I'm in the UK, that is uh, you know fairly late in the evening. So eventually, this ring battle does go on overnight. Um, but I did hear that eventually, you know, a lot of then stronger players came out overnight, probably due to the time zone of the started ring battle. As I know, a lot of um, a lot of the armies that are the strongest in turn, I think, are uh, Asia-based players. So they're in time zones where kind of a late UTC time doesn't suit them, which obviously wasn't ideal for them. But uh, it was great to see when they started coming out. You'll see towards the end of this video, um, a few of those start hitting and we start taking a few L's. But uh, overall, we seem to be doing pretty well. The whole team just progressing forward and, and everyone focused on the objective and moving forwards. Now, I see another report here. Our second army did take, you know, did, did reasonably well here, actually. Kind of a reasonably level battle against what is a stronger army. You know, T3s with higher respect up against our T2 army, but not too bad. Now, looking here, this is uh, oh, this is skipped ahead to almost 1 o'clock UTC, so this is about four hours after the previous footage. And you'll see here that we have progressed pretty well. That kind of spear through the middle has been successful in pushing through most of their tunnels. The northern area now is just clearing forts, um, you know, without great priority, as we want to cut off the tunnel, and then those forts stop being a threat as they won't be able to get troops to them. And the uh, the southern area has linked up with the northern kind of spear through. So now all of our momentum is pushing through, aiming towards that top tunnel. So you can see we're leaving armies all the way along our uh, our spear, making sure that the opponents can't take the any of the tiles in order to um, stop our progression, basically, and cut us off. Uh, we had a good, fairly good report here, actually, uh, where we went level with this player here, you know, higher level, meta army, and we actually didn't have gear on both the Shadow and Gimli. I have a fairly strong suspicion that Frodo and Sam with Swans did a lot of heavy lifting with the opponent's damage, but... Uh, yeah, and then we had a, and, you know, we've had some good reports here. You'll see we get an overwhelming victory here with King of Men putting out over 100k damage numbers in both of these. Dane, of course, putting out 120 to 140k as per usual. 
Oh, and then we eventually got stopped with a draw uh, by Evil Adorable Fool here. Um, but again, we're taking out a lot of enemies, doing a lot of damage here. Uh, 130 again from Dane and King of Men, 75 before he was taken out. But overall, most of these reports are, um, you know, pretty successful. We do take our first L here, as I said, where the Asian uh, kind of community started waking up. 168 damage, uh, K damage from this Dane and 125 from Gimli as well. You can see he's got a fantastic formation, using Falgin really well. Uh, a very high command on this Falgin, 528 with the Great Beasts. And then also, of course, that high defense providing defensive support for his other, uh, other troops, which is brilliant. You've got this Dane here with 232 attack and very high damage as well, courtesy of fully refined Axe of Khazad Doom and also a strong Crimson Blade. He got very lucky with his two strengthens there, both going into attack. I'm a little bit envious. And both Gimli and Thorin also having uh, their uniques. But the main thing is that that, uh, that Falgin is built brilliantly well. It's, of course, Command taking most of the damage. And then it's almost like a mix of Frodo and Sam and Gandalf the Grey kind of rolled into one, as then it also provides defensive support for the other troops in his army. So if you can get Falgin to a high respect, he is very, very strong. Um, and as you can see there, did very, very well. Now we get another report here with our secondary army with Frodo and Sam, who a couple of them you'll notice have leveled up a little bit. We have put gear on them now, so we're getting 80k out from Shadow and Gimli. And we get a nice level kind of report there, probably slightly in our favour. It says five days on there, but that was just because there were a little bit of you know PvP before the start of the ring battle. But you'll see that the, you know after a day or a couple of hours, that's hit 27 million on the ping. Elsewhere on the server, you can see around that Greyhaven's currently held still by Linden, but they are fighting with Isengard with that 10 million ping. And in West Nan, Left Nui, Isengard are also still fighting with Rohan down there as well. And then there's a couple of pings around Erebor, but mainly the Mordor players are up here, so there isn't much. Now we push ahead to 4 o'clock the next day. Unfortunately, I couldn't show any earlier than this, as, as I said, I had to uh, you know, board a flight. But if you take a look here, you can see that we have progressed pretty heavily through that tunnel in northern Amon Lank, and we are now starting to spread out across, and we have relocated several Mordor players. So you can see at this point, we have uh, an astronomical ping, 56 million participants with 16.5 million deaths, and that's all within one day, which is pretty crazy. So if we look through some of our own reports, we had a couple of people who uh, kind of flicked onto our account for us to try and um, try and take out a few opposition and make use while we were on the flight. Uh, so here we have, uh, actually we did take a slight loss here, you can see against Falion, who's a very, very strong player. Uh, well, if we took a loss, I'm not sure. We we did receive slightly less damage, and we healed some as well, and he took slightly more damage. You'll notice from the damage numbers, however, that everything doesn't quite add up, which is because uh, we actually got a little bit lucky with Sauron and his madness statistics. So, of course, Ma uh, Sauron has a couple of skills that can inflict madness. Uh, you have the Deceiver, uh, and you also have Lord of Gifts as well. So, in that case, he's inflicted madness on one of the opposition commanders, who's then dealt damage to his own troops and helped put that a little bit more in our favour. We did then get wiped by his second army, but actually, for only having 600 of our army left, we did deal a reasonable amount of damage, about 1,700 there, which, you know, can be more than happy with. Meanwhile, our second team, you know, mainly using purple gear, continues to kind of, you know, do a reasonable amount of damage here. Primarily, we're kind of using them to finish off armies rather than, you know, take them on themselves. Uh, we also had a couple of good reports here, taking out Maverick here and his Frodo and Sam. Looks like we did most of the damage to the uh, the opponent's troops, but we didn't um, weren't able to take out Frodo and Sam with the Great Beasts, which of course is a fantastic combination. So no surprise there. Uh, we also then came up against Shady Strider, but he only had half an army. And then with our kind of weakened army, we did take out White Wizard as well, which. Um, is very useful, particularly you see huge damage numbers here, 180k from Dane and 145k from Aragorn, King of Men. And I'll keep saying it, he's only respect 5, but they're being able to put out 400k of damage across those t across you know the whole team is crazy when you consider that you know one's respect 3 and one's respect 5. It's a very good value for money team, and I will do a run-through of, of my team somewhere. 
I'm kind of having to flick through the report to see here if the reason why it went so well, considering we only had half an army, was because uh, we inflicted madness on the opponent's team. But it doesn't look like it, as, as White Council does inflict on his own team. And I don't think he has White Rider on. No, he doesn't. So there was nothing there for madness to inflict. It's just that he has a slightly lower respect Gandalf the White, so that's why it went in our favour, as, of course, White Rider is a, a huge skill for getting the most out of Gandalf the White. It's kind of the main reason why you'd use him over uh, over someone like Gandalf the Grey, who you could get a lot cheaper. And looking on, we then eventually did get taken down. We did get hit by Gorbag here using Witch King, Le, Sauron and Carmel, which is an interesting army. Um, you know, we did still, I did still, did still, sorry, come out on top, dealing more damage than the opponent. But we did get defeated, so we have to wait, uh, you know, wait 10 minutes or so, which it, it should be fine. It takes more than 10 minutes at this point to reinforce. We also had other hits earlier on here. You can see we had hit Omagard. Oh which it looks to be a tile clearing army um, and was only half strength anyway or at least a um you know a spam tile army but we did also hit corb sergio with a level 45 army so it was leveled up um using a uh, you know a strong gandalf the white respect 10 with unique theoden AMA, and then finally a win as well so a full mounted uh, army and we get another good victory here of course not exactly a meta composition um, and so, so we do come out fairly strongly on top, over 300k damage overall, again, respect 5, King of Men, absolutely, you know, ploughing through, and then we hit Spartan 214 here, with his Witch King, Frodo and Sam, Lurts and uh, Shadow Army, and we did take, uh, you know, a bit, a bit of a hit here, down to 1000, but we do, uh, we do deal more damage than we receive. We've also had quite a bit of back and forth here with the same Asian player we took an L from earlier on. And you can see they're reasonably balanced. We are probably slightly coming out um, underneath. Yeah, you see here, so he's got 268k damage received. We're receiving 315k. So don't get received, uh, deceived by those little uh, counters along the top. Um, we, of course, are using a slightly more expensive army using both mounted troops and eagles. So... Uh, yeah, we are we are definitely losing slightly more than him, but still, it's a, a really fun back and forth between us. Um, you'll see here again. We had another hit. These these mainly are uh, they're quite useful because they're building up a lot of experience for us. I believe uh, I don't have the footage for it. Of course, I said someone else was playing on my behalf, but um, the the fight was mainly around this person's keep, which was right by the entrance to the to the tunnel. So they were kind of getting involved in trying to relocate this player, as of course he does have probably the strongest army we've seen in Turd. So um, so we needed to get him out as soon as possible. And another uh, Asia-based player here, uh, using Sestaro to great effect. Um, Along with the Undying Shadow, uh, utilising classic gear here. Very strong Goblin Armour, which is one I usually recommend in my videos to give plus 54 attack. Uh, along with Sauron as well, with an agility set, so a nice fast Sauron. And interestingly, Undying as well, which is someone who I think is very strong, but you don't see used very often in the meta. He does have a strong evade, maybe not quite as good as Gil-Galad's, but he also can put up very good early round damage numbers as well. So yeah, he's very, 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 very strong. What else have we got in our reports here? So we've got this hit here where we're just cleaning away uh, half an army with Logo. Then we hit Vega here, who, I, as I scroll down, I see quite a few reports from Vega. So he seems to be extremely active for Loth, and he's uh, got a very strong army here. But it's, it's kind of a troop support army with Isildur, Gil-Galad, um, Isildur Respect 11 as well, Gil-Galad, Zenith 3, both with Unique. And then he's also got Gandalf the White, Zenith 1 with Unique, and finally King of Men, R10 with Unique. So, you know, respect level-wise, he's quite a long way out in front of us, but I think we do pretty well here, considering we haven't got full army. King of Men, of course, dies partway through, as we can see, he only does 55k damage. But we do still come out on top, dealing more damage to the opposition than we take, which I think if we had full army and full um, HP on our commander, we would have come out on top. Anyway, that's the last of the footage I was able to uh, be sent over before uh, before the players stopped playing on my account, but I do appreciate it. And if you guys have enjoyed seeing this ring battle, of course, massive 56 million ping, please hit the like button and please smash subscribe to see what happens in my next season update.